And that is how a 1K edge should cut. 1K. Well, in this case, 1.5K. Bevel set. Alright, so we got a little further along. Uh, these are the original scales, and uh, see, I, I basically traced it onto here, but I had to enlarge it to accommodate this larger blade. Uh, this is actually the original, so it, it's a little smaller and it rode up higher than I want this one to. So um, I made it a little wider here. You know and then I'll adjust with the wedge and everything but uh, so far so good I uh, cut this end off with uh, my cutting tool my cutting wheel uh, on my Milwaukee Dremel copy thing did the same thing on the end here I'll reshape with the sanding drum you can see this was my first long cut and um, I, I wasn't comfortable because I haven't done this in a while and I didn't want to screw up so this was the second one you can see I cut straighter and longer so uh, I'll be going back outside once the battery's charged and uh, recutting this come down here so I have less work with the sanding drum and the file to do but uh, you know so far so good you know um, these scales are from uh, late 1700s early 1800s um, this blade is really nice and all, but this is uh, that very, very old steel that, you know, when you sharpen it, it it'll shave great, but <clears throat> the greaves here will be harder. The steel is harder and it's going to take a keener edge. And um, that's what I really kind of want to do. I want to, I, I, I have a, uh, a, a remade a Clark that, I think it's a Clark, whatever. It's on my website from the late 1700s um, in straight scale uh, form factor, which is nice and, and shaves nice, all right? But it doesn't give me that, like, incredible psycho laser razor shave. But uh, this grieves well, so.
All right, so um, just want to touch base um, on this blade, some of the geometry, and what have you, and um, just talk a little bit about it. You know, I, um, <clears throat> if you follow my social media, you know, my Facebook or my uh, Instagram, you may have seen a couple of pictures that posted, and you know, a couple of people emailed me, somebody messaged me, he's like, well, you know, why didn't you, you know, hone this differently so when I, you know because i hone it this way that's why right um i i wanted a no tape geometry i want to take this blade with me traveling i want to be able to pull out a stone and hone without having to deal with tape when i'm out on the road um and i also have and I, you're gonna think i'm nuts looking at this the the wear here that i'm showing you um but I, I have a, a strong affection for uh, blades like this because uh, my first greaves, this is a greaves razor. Uh, my first greaves was like this. I bought it off the BST on Badger and Blade and I bought it from Scott, uh, Life Too Short. And uh, it had like, I didn't even know what I was buying because I, I was new. So anyway, so um, I don't know where this video is going to drop in, in the scheme of things, because this is a multi-clip video I'm making. But um, so I wanted this blade to keep that profile, that original Greaves profile. I wound up selling that blade for some reason, and uh, I missed it. So I want to make another one. So here I go, you know, um, same profile blade. And um, went right at it and honed it. And you know, I, I don't, you know, this, the, the wear is noticeable, sure. You know, and this is created in part because this blade is a very, very, very shallow grind. It's like a 1 16th grind, it's very near wedge, you know. So you're just going to get this. When I got the blade, when I was, when I was looking at it, and I was like, ah, oh, man, my, I, I could tell from this profile that my first attempts. My angle was going to come in something like this, so I was going to have this flat, right, and then have this space here. This was going to stay. And um, I looped this, and it was all full of um, micro pitting and rust. There were there were like holes right through. There were there were like holes you could see right through. You know, um, it was bad. It, the razor was abused and not stored correctly, and it was never honed correctly. I think it was freehanded because there wasn't a lot of wear up on the spine. But I could tell by looking at it that I was going to wind up with this type of thing here, and I would have to hone both sides, right? And then what you wind up doing is you keep doing that, you know, and then eventually you wind up with this new profile, right? Just wear it. So that's the idea, but you wind up with like, you know, pretty much a, you know, a, a pretty wide bevel like this. And like I said, I don't care. I, I can tell you, I haven't uh, put a micrometer on it. I don't need to. Uh, it's just a razor. I don't put a micrometer on every blade, but I'm looking at it and I'm judging it. And I can tell you the angle is steep for this razor's profile and it's going to shave like a demon. That I know. So anyway, so that's that. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> you got this, right? And basically, you know, you're honing and you, know, you let me try and get this centered here. You know, you want to, uh, yes, this is a razor, <laughs> really bad. Anyway, so you wind up having something like that happen. You know, that that's going to be your, um, your honing and you're going to wind up with a flat here, but some point showing, and then you're gonna wind up with flat there, you know? And as you hone into it, you know, little by slowly, what you wind up with is you wind up creating, you know, no, oh, that wasn't good at all. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I'm, I was blocked. All right, so you wind up here. You have a point, right? And then you're going to have some flat. And then over here, you're going to have flat, too. It's just the way it's going to go, you know? It, there's no getting around it, 
you know? Sorry for the badgy uh, geometry lesson. Um, <clears throat> I should work on these things in advance. So anyway, that's where we're at with this. Um, the scales are in place. Um, they could use a little bit more rounding up and through here. I could use it like a tiny hint of shaping. Not much, you know, and I could use some more sanding there. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to get the whole razor set up, honed, get it all taken care of, get it all set up into place, uh, work with it, you know. And, um, you know, typically on scales like this, uh, people would pin without washers. But you see, I use the washer, right? Because I'm probably at some point going to pull these pins and then finish, finish the, uh, the scales. Maybe, I, you know, I, I might not. I, I kind of just like it sort of, you know, like rough and ready like this, the, uh, the proletariat, you know, the, uh, understated, under, you know, I understated, you know, type of thing. I, I, there's no gold wash. There's no fancy, whatever the mark is. Well, it's greaves. So that's high end, uh, high class, but you know, it's not a particularly um, sought after profile blade or anything. It's kind of common in the world of greaves. And uh, no special tank stamp, no fencing foils, none of that. Um, so it's kind of regular, you know? But I like it. I like it a lot. I like the way it feels. I like the way it balances in my hand. Um, you know, this uh, it, it sits nice. You know, and I can throw this in my dop kit, you know? And I have a little bit of class, you know, because uh, this white stuff is kind of slick. And, um, you know, um, it's going to shave like a demon. And uh, I don't feel like I'm holding on to a, a collector's head. You know, so uh, there's that. Anyway, so I just want to touch base on that real quick and um, show you the geometry where it's at right now. Oh, and one thing, like I noticed, uh, you can tell I've been on a 1K. I'm not done, but I'm close to done. I don't know if you can see it. It's not really all the way up to the end of the toe, the bevel that is. It's sort of there, but it sort of stops. You can see that little circular outline. Whereas the other Whereas the other side, we hit already, right, all the way up. So I do have more work to do to clean up the bevel on this. You can see a little bit of a distraction down here, um, this area over there. Um, need a bunch more work in here. So what I'm hoping is that when I'm done, cleaning out that profile and making sure the bevel comes down right, you know, to a peak without any grief. That this section up here is cleaned up. If not, then I'm going to have to add extra roll to my stroke, but I'll evaluate it then. Anyway, so that's where we're at now. So the next stage is get it back on the stones and uh, see what we got. All right, talk to you soon.
All right, so I just want to take a quick break from the honing um, to just uh, point a couple of things out that I'm not talking about while I'm actually doing the honing. I'm uh, concentrating on the blade while I'm honing. So I, I didn't want to get involved with trying to tell you what's going on. Then I would forget something, not pay attention. Maybe I cut myself. Maybe I screw up my blade. I don't know. So um, I'm going to try and uh, amplify this with some stills if I can capture them. Um, I have a problem here where the, where the bevel is still not all the way down to the edge, but it's closer. So the more I hone uh, that plane, that flat plane, that bevel that I'm cutting into this steel, is eventually going to hit there but I have more work um, I know I mentioned working on a 1k um, I do that without thinking it's that stone I'm using is a 1.5k Shapton Pro that's my stone of choice right now I love my uh, Chosera 1k but I've really just fallen in love with the Shapton Pro and I just use it as a go-to I can swap those two stones out interchangeably there's no problem all right um, my bevel up at the toe still has not come all the way to the edge there was there was apparently when this was made there was a little bit of a when the grinder was making this it, it rolls off so that's an issue i considered grinding a little bit of a barber's notch into it but i i don't think i'm going to do that i'm just going to leave it um my main concern is that the flat Okay, that is the bevel is also not all the way to the uh, edge here either. So I have some more work to do on that. All right. And it pretty much holds true for both sides, although the toe is better on one side than the other. And the heel is also better on one side than the other. But they're, they're both within the ballpark. And... Um, that I need them to be in. In other words, the differences are not so disparate that I have some like crazy honing thing to do. Uh, people ask, uh, you know, how do you evaluate a razor? This is how I evaluate a razor. I hone it. I look at it. I pay attention as I'm going along. I make decisions out of the gate when I'm starting to hone um, because I'm intending to achieve a desired result. It's like sort of like photography where you pre-envision the scene. You um, then you shoot accordingly. You know, f-stop, shutter speed, exposure, highlights, shadows, whatever zone system, if you want to go that far. Um, and kind of like the same thing with uh, razors. I, I don't, you know, you know, I, I, I really don't pull out calipers all that often. I use them, like, you know, for just for the sake of, like, whatever. But for the most part, I just uh, get into it. And then as I go along, I look and I uh, make up my mind. Uh, pretty much this is going along very well. Uh, the steel here is all cleaned up, so when I'm cleaned up here and I get my bevel down to the edge there too, I'm, I'm going to be in solid steel and I'll be fine. A um, couple of things I showed you. I, I showed you some rolling, you know, on the stone, so I'm trying to get up into the toe. Um, showed a little swarf on my fingers. Uh, this material here, you really don't want to get swarf on that, so you got to, like, keep... You know, for me, I'm right-handed, so I got to keep these fingers clear of swarf so I don't get them on the scales because I don't want to have to resend. So I have to be cognizant of that because it does get messy. The other thing, you know, and um, you know, I'm sorry to focus so much on the bevel. I'm not really sorry. It's a choice. It's just that some people are probably like wanting to see the finished result, and that's just you know, one of those things. Anyway, so. You know, pressure. You, you saw me using both hands, and, and in this particular case, both hands are, are applying pressure, and I'm sensing with my left hand, which is usually not on the blade, feedback, but I'm also applying pressure. And you saw me moving my finger back and forth on the spine, um, trying to move, you know, from here to here to here, and, and then back, and try and keep a certain amount of evenness to everything. And you can see the evenness, you can see the, or well, lack thereof, in the bevel. You know in the highlight when you roll it so if you had like some weird ledge looking type of thing happening where um you you press too hard in one area then you know you have to 
not do that anymore. It's not a perfect wedge. There is a little grind, but it's like, it might as well not even be there. So your tendency is to think you can get away with a ton of pressure. You can get away with more pressure. That's the reality, okay? But you can't really just go ape shit on it, okay? And let me explain why, all right? So, yes, the hollow blade is going to flex more because the steel is thin, right? Now, everybody's saying, well, you know, I have the wedge, and the wedge is thick, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. You got to think, though, okay? You got to think about the dimension of your edge, okay? Up at your cutting edge, okay? You're at your, right where the apex is, your edge width up there, okay? That's measured in, like, microns, very few microns okay it's very thin so think about a fishing leader like a, a wire leader if you go fishing you know um that wire has got you know it's really strong you, know, you can catch a shark with some of it. it's got like a 150 pound test so you can catch a you know 100 pound fish that's going to fight you and it's not going to snap but you can bend it right and it doesn't break well the same thing with your edge here okay so you have to be cognizant of that so what you can't do what you don't want to do is you this is your razor for the sake of uh, description I, I could set something up with the camera and everything but it would probably take me like a full day to get the lighting right so this will go a lot easier all right your stone you're saying the stone is hard you know so the stone is hard yeah but the stone is wet okay so the top couple of microns of your stone is softer than the rest of it right so you're actually going to create give there. It's actually going to have cushion. Now, I know this is a piece of silicone. It's not a stone, but it's here to represent the top surface of your, you know, your bevel setter or any other home. Once it's wet, it has give. Trust me, it has give. Have you ever seen the Grand Canyon? Okay, that's rock that had give. Okay, it just eroded away. It got soft. It floated away. <clears throat> Washed away. Okay, so maybe that wasn't the best example, but uh, you get my point. All right, just because it's rock doesn't mean it's impervious. That's the point, right? So you have your 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 blade. This is your razor. I, I know you're saying it's a ruler. It, you're right. It is a ruler, but it's pretending to be a razor. Okay. Now, if I push, I can push. See what happens? You push. I, I, I think you can probably see that, right? It's pushing. It's actually going into the rubber. Okay. You're actually also deflecting the, the metal here a little bit. Now, you might not be able to see that, but if there was a way for me to get like, you know, all kinds of micrometers in here, you would see that I'm actually bending both the metal and putting an impression into the rubber. See it in there? See how it's pushing in? See that little highlight in the rubber just in front of the edge? Okay, that's from me pushing down on it. That's what you don't want to do, all right? You do not want to take your blade and put it down on the stone and push so hard that you are like chiseling into the top surface. You know how you take a chisel on wood and you bring up those curly cues? Okay, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is more like running a file, if you can imagine that, or a piece of sandpaper, you know. Uh, or running something over a file or a piece of sandpaper, but just enough to take material off, but not enough to dig in. Why? Well, you don't want to deflect the edge because then you have to fix that. And then you're constantly taking off too much metal. And then at some point or another, you're going to have basically what you call a freaking toothpick. And you're not going to have a razor. So that's no good. And even if you come up short on that toothpick concept, you know, you still took off too much metal and you did too much work. You already have too much work. You don't want to add to the equation. Right? The other part is like you don't want to gouge the stone. You don't want to, like, belly it. You don't want to, like, wear the edge where it's, like, lower here than there. Okay? Th yes, this has now become my 1K. So you, you want to keep it as flat through where as possible. Um, I routinely pull my stone off the bench and then uh, put it on a diamond plate to uh, resurface it while I'm honing. Um, so, you know, that that's something else to keep things flat. And you'll notice that I'm not pushing down like I'm trying to grind off, you know, the most amount of metal that I can at one time. That's not my goal. My goal is to take off just enough metal to balance. It's all about balance, okay? I want to balance my working system. 
I don't want to wear too much. I don't want to wear too much in one place. I want to do the same thing with the blade. I don't want to wear too much here versus here because then my bevel will wind up being like that. That's no good. Then I'll have to work harder to bring it back up, you know, true. So you want to use some pressure. You don't want to deflect the blade. You don't want to press down into the stone. So the feeling that I'm getting, okay, is, you know, the feedback is letting me know, you know, how hard I'm pushing. And I'm also watching the swarf come up, but mostly it's about feel. That's why I say honing is all about feeling. Certainly, you don't have to develop the highest sense of feedback, you know, um, awareness. <clears throat> but you should actually work at that because it's very helpful. Um, but different people are going to have different levels of uh, sensations there. So, you know, you work with what you got. The more you do it, the better you get. But, you know, not everybody's honing 40, 50 edges a week. So, you know, you learn to feel. And if you feel like you're digging in, stop. Use less pressure. When you back off, if you don't think you're taking off enough steel, like you're not seeing swarf come up, then you're too light. So you have to figure out that balance in there, you know. And the only way that balance really comes, honestly, it's trial and error. And it's doing it over and over again, you know. Um, that's just it. Anyway, so I want to take a little step back and um, explain some of what you just saw. And now I'm going to go back to honing the snot out of this blade on my uh, 1.5K so I can get the edge to where I want it. I'm not going to show too much more honing from here on in because this is really where the edge lives. Okay, it's at the bevel. So I wanted to like really work on showing you this and explaining what's going on because it's really you know you know most of your sharp is in the bevel no bevel no edge i don't care who says what all right it's all down in the bevel the bevel isn't an event it's a process this bevel will develop from this 1.5k on up to about 5k right and then at that point i will have achieved i don't know i'm throwing a number out there right uh, about 90% of my sharpness and then the rest just comes in from polish and refinement and um, so the beginning is where I focus and is where I put my time and that's where I want the video to focus um, it is in that aspect of the honing the rest is like putting you know sprinkles on a cupcake you know uh, the sprinkles are great you know and I'll show you the finished product and all and I'll probably show some clips of going on the 5k to 8k or whatever other stones I decide to use and um but uh, the fact of the matter is, is the, the bigger part of the story is right here at my uh, bevel set stage. Anyway, a couple other points to make. My pivot pin usually at this point has come loose. And in this case, it has not. That tells me I did an exemplary job of setting this. Um, and it doesn't matter if it does get loose because you just have it back down. So I, I'm, I'm not really like, you know, tooting my own horn. I'm just saying I, I nailed it. I got it right. Uh, it hasn't backed off at all. So I still have the same tension in the pivot. And I expect that when I'm done, I'll have to tap it down a little bit more. But that's something you should know uh, that happens, what goes on. Um, in case you were wondering, the wedge is uh, made out of brass. The pins are brass. The washers are brass. Um, and... Uh, yeah, that's about it for right now. So anyway, so. And, um, just want to go over a little bit of progress. You can probably see that the bevel is now um, a little bit bigger. The wear on the spine is also a little bit bigger. Well, thicker, wider, whatever. Um, but where I'm at now is a very good spot for, um, you know, progressing into uh, higher grits and so on and so forth. I've, um, I'm gonna, I put a clip and I'm going to drop it in here. It's going to show you a little bit of some of the honing style I adapted to overcome the geometry on the blade that was a little wonky that was causing me some problems. Um,
I could have continued to hone straight into it, right? And maybe perhaps had a little bit less smile on the blade as a result. Um, the smile is not a consideration. I'm, I'm just explaining. Um, but this piece at the heel, I needed to really work on it. So what I did was I did like a uh, uh, heel leading rolling stroke where I really focused up in here. And what I did was I brought the profile in line with how it should have been originally, I believe. Or, or at least proportionately to the rest of the blade. I think what happened over time was that whoever was honing this just did uh, like abominations to uh, the geometry with like, it almost looks like it was done on a steel, to be honest. Um, the blade was so convex, it was just incredulous. Anyway, and I also uh, repaired up here at the toe, all right? Um, by doing a rather unorthodox, I wouldn't even say it's a repair, it's just sort of a, uh, well, there's a little bit of repair, there's a little bit of just superficial uh work so i did this this rolling thing but and you're not going to see it unfortunately in the video but i'm actually i actually brought the spine up off the stone sort of like the way you would um do the repair tip on a blade maybe that type of like pitched type of uh, honing attack just to get up into the very tip to bring the striations all the way around the actual edge and you'll see it in a close-up is going to stop right about the midpoint where the blade does this little up where the blade does this little upturn i don't really want edge up there it it gets really tedious i i kind of do like it sometimes but not on this blade this blade is for like traveling i just need a simple safe edge that isn't tedious so i can have the edge start um but just for the sake of looks i i, I work this so the bevel appears to go all the way to the front. And essentially it does. It's just not refined to um, a shaving edge all the way up. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. I did a little polish on the... Uh, I don't know if you can get to see it here on the end of the razor. I just took like a little bit of 600 and uh, went in there and took the tarnish off. And, you know, I, I might eventually come in here and do some of that. I uh, did some sanding on this, you know, and like this, this video is more about like honing to a bevel that like really screams for you than anything else. It's not really a restoration. It is a restoration in a way because I'm bringing the blade back and I put new scales on it. But, you know, um, I'm not a razor restorer. Uh, well, I'm not doing razor restoration work here. You know, the, the scales are imperfect. Okay. They're a little, uh, out of alignment. Um, I see that there's a little gap down here and all of this in time, it may be fixed. I may fix everything. Um, may fix it little by slowly. I, I, if you've seen me, I'll, I'll pull a pin out of a blade. No problem. Drop of a hat or I'll tap one down. Um, I don't need it to be perfect right now. What I need, what I want really is to get it to shaving condition. I want to be exceedingly happy with that edge. And after that, I figured the rest out. I, I may just throw this in my, my DOP kit, you know, with, uh, <clears throat> you know. Nah, I probably wouldn't just throw it in there alone. I, I'd probably put some of that VCI paper in with it to make sure it doesn't rust and a little oil on it. But, um, yeah, this just may be a traveler. So it doesn't need to be, like, super perfect. And, you know, that's a big part of, like, what I'm about with, with shaving and buying old razors. You know, to, to work for perfection all the time is, like... Yeah, I don't get it. You know, guys, um, you know, we get attached to things. So we buy a $20, $30 razor and it's like, oh, who am I going to send it out to restore? Well, it's a $20, $30 razor. The restoration is going to cost you $80 to $150. It's going to be a $40 razor when you're done. So unless that thing has sentimental value or something, you know, you got to like really consider whether or not you want to do that. And sometimes people do. That's fine. Just saying. Okay, um, think before you leap, you know. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I, I hit this with some major wear. And the space in the middle here is a little scary in a way. But I know that I'm not going to be doing another bevel set on this for a really long time. But I, I, I can't help but think, like, how cool it would be if I actually honed this to where it was an absolute perfect wedge in the entire side of the razor. The entire blade was, like, all, like... 
you know, on the stone, the striations, the polish from the stone. I think that would just be so badass. Um, anyway, I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. I'm going to drop it. <clears throat> All right. So here we are back uh, at the bench again. And um, realize that the video is getting a little long. So I'm going to end this um, video with the shaving uh, sequence that is coming up. Okay. It's a little choppy because I didn't want to put the entire 10 minute, 12 minute video up. I want to try and trim it. I want to keep this whole video as short as I can, even though it's already long. I don't want it to be longer just for the sake of a shaving video. I know guys like to see them and you will see some shaving. It's just that you won't see the entire shave, but I did do two pass to uh, BBS with this blade. I, um, I honed, I set the bevel on the shaft in 1.5K. I went to the 5K, um, finished there, moved to uh, this Oaseto, and I used the Nagura progression ending with Tomo, this Tomo Nagura uh, to make slurry. And I finished, and I came up with like an amazing edge, like a 10, a perfect 10. Um, earlier, I stated, you know, the way around here was intentional. I know it's not for everybody, but this blade isn't for everybody it's for me and this is what i wanted um not everybody's gonna want to do that they want to use tape that's fine by me i didn't want to use tape so when i go away on vacation i don't have to tape my blade to hone it i also wanted a very steep angle and um this is pretty steep and uh, it shaves like it's crazy i nailed it I nailed it to the nines. It's like, it's a 10, it's a dime. It's like, no, it's like spinal tap. I went to 11 with the edge, right? So, um, yeah, I'm loving this blade and I'm loving the work that I did. I had a lot of fun. And uh, the point of this whole video was just kind of like, you know, show you a little bit like what goes on here when I get a razor and I want to tune it up and I want to get it right and I want to shave with it. And uh, I'm not looking to enter this into a... a a museum or a beauty contest so uh it is what it is and i love it and that's all that matters you know other people won't like it i know that it's okay you know um <laughs> people who feel the need to go out of the way to tell me that i don't know what your motive is but you're not helping me out uh you're not helping anybody else out either and you know um negativity is you know what it is i guess anyway um yeah i just had a troll on uh one of my videos and was like delete, <laughs> move on, dude, you know, get a life. It, this is shaving. That's all this is, is shaving. So anyway, uh, enjoy the shave video that's coming up. And, um, you saw earlier, I did some shaving that was on a bevel set, right? I, uh, shaved after I set the bevel on this with the 1.5 K shaft in, I did some stropping on leather then I shaved with it. And, uh, that actually went <clears throat> pretty well, but, um, <clears throat> this edge is like a thousand times better. So you'll get to see that. And if you have any questions, leave them below. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All that good stuff that helps the uh, the channel grow. And uh, look, you know, this is all about having fun. I had a blast doing this. I love it. I'm, I'm stoked on this blade. I'm like super happy with it. And that's what it's all about, you know. And so go out, get yourself a blade, get yourself some material for scales, some pins, pin it up. Don't worry what it looks like. It's about shaving. She uh, hone it, shave with it. And if you don't like something, fix it. You don't like the way the pin over here is pull it out, do it again. You don't like the way the blade is sitting in the scales, take it out, shim it, do it again. Recut the scales, recut the hole, keep doing it. That's what this is all about. Not, you know, pretending to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. All right. I can find fall, uh, flaws and faults in anything if I want to, but I choose to not be that person. Um, I rather look at the positive side and here I put an old war bird back into service, you know, and I'm happy with it. So anyway, until next time, take care. See you soon. And don't forget, always have fun.
Whoa. Baby bus. Does not get better than that, folks. Just does not. 